Welcome to another Neba Spotlight. Today, I'm very happy to present Hillary Dolby. Hillary, tell us about you. Tell us about your business. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate you having me here. Um, I am here to talk about the Corporate Transparency Act. Um, but first, a little bit about me. Um, I am the founder of Vision Path CFO, and we look to arm business owners with financial clarity, trying to help them make better decisions today to move their business forward tomorrow. We answer the I don't know questions. I don't know why I have sales, but no profit. I don't know why I have no cash. I don't know when to grow um, by acquisition or um, employee. And really folks who are looking for someone to sit at their table um, and to help them make decisions really to move their business forward. Um, and I uh, appreciate you inviting me, Greg. What I want to talk about today is the Corporate Transparency Act, which is an act that has been passed by the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, which is FinCEN. Um, and it's part of the Anti-Money Laundering Act. I'm sure all of you are so familiar with that. Um, really what it is, is the government is trying to avoid money laundering. And so they're trying to get information on, on all small and medium-sized businesses. Um, public, biz public corporations already have to report tremendous amounts of information. But if you're a solopreneur or small, medium-sized business, you have an LLC, really other than your tax return, the company, the um, government doesn't know much about you. So this... Um, it will affect 30 to 40 million businesses across the United States. Um, I would assume it affects you before I would assume it doesn't affect you. So um, there are lots of people that have to report, including corporations, LLCs, anybody who basically has created um, some kind of entity with the Secretary of State. Also, if you're a foreign company, um, that is registered to do business in the United States or with the, any, any Indian tribe, you also have to file. Um, and what we're talking about is um, um, trying, there's a couple things to determine. One is, are you someone who has to file? Um, and there are some folks that are um, exempt against publicly traded entities, um, already report a tremendous amount of information non-profits, but otherwise you're probably going to have to report. And um, if you use the QR code or the website, it takes you to all of the um, information. They've actually done a really nice job of trying to lay out what it is that, um, what the decision path, the decision tree is for an actual company that has to report and for a person. And we're gonna get into the persons in a minute. Um, if you are involved with more than one company in any way, shape, or form, I would suggest that you get a FinCEN number. Um, and that is a, a registration that you do personally that says, I am Hillary, here's where I live, here's my social security, all of that information. And then when I am working with my company, I can actually just give that company um, the FinCEN number. I don't have to give them all of my personal information. And that's going to come into play in a moment. Um, the play is if you are a beneficial owner of a company. So we all know that, you know, you own your own LLC. Maybe you're in partnership with someone. You actually have ownership interests. Very important. We want to know who has ownership interests. This act from the FinCEN um, actually goes into people who are beneficial owners. And this is where the rub is coming from most of the um, business associations, state um, associations that are out there because it is actually anyone who is in a senior officer position. So if you have an O behind your name for a company that you work with, um, or if you have an O in your company um, that you work with, it also can be broadly determined to be anyone who has substantial influence over decision-making that affects financial structure, employee termination. Now, if you get down to the really nasty detail of financial internal structure, employee termination, you almost are looking at anybody in a, in a management um, supervisor level. That's not quite what they're looking for, but what they want is they want to know if I am a Greg's CFO full-time 
in his company. Um, I have decision-making power. I'm not an owner. I just get a salary and he pays me huge bonuses because, you know, we get along so great. I actually would have to register as a beneficial owner of Greg's company. Um, and what that means is that I have to actually provide Greg either with my FinCEN number, which is my recommendation, or I have to provide Greg with all of my personal information so that he can register me as a beneficial owner. A um, little bit of, of overreach is the complaint that folks have. Um, and so I actually registered my own company. I did not give the government any information that they did not already give me. Social security number, tax ID, driver's license number, all of those things. But what I, um, I kind of have a problem with is the overreach from the beneficial owner perspective, because it is extremely important um, to this network of information they're trying to build to get all of that. Again, it's a great outcome. They're looking for money laundering. If everybody pays their taxes, I would pay less, which is awesome. Um, but it is really burdensome because um, in, my, in my scenario, Greg would be responsible. He could be fined and he could be penalized with jail if I don't give him my updated information and share that with him, which is just a tremendous burden. So... If you are a reporting company um, and you have been in business before January 1st, you have uh, of this year, you have until January 1st of 25 to report. Once um, we pass January 1st of 24, any entity that's created has 90 days to report. So um, if the law stands, then it will be this part of the normal. I registered with the state, I got my EIN number, and now I have to register um, my company. There are a lot of helpful tips and tricks on the website, as I said, to understand if you are a registering company. Um, I'm going to go down this left side on the green teal. Um, is the company a corporation? Yes, you have to report. Are you an LLC? Yes, you have to report. Are you uh, something, someone that was created by filing a document with the Secretary of State? <laughs> yes, you have to report. Basically, the people who are not going to report are, are much smaller um, list than those who have to. So you um, you can you can choose not to comply, just like you can choose not to pay taxes or you can choose to speed. Um, all of those things um, have consequences, those decisions. And so really what we're looking at is heavy fines and penalties um, for either not filing or for not filing correct information or for missing information. Um, there are a, uh, several lawsuits. One actually has already been settled. If you were John Smith, whatever the guy's name was, and or a member of the Small Business Association as of March 1st of 24, you are exempt from this. Um, there are other owner uh, small business uh, associations. I'm in Michigan, the state of Michigan um, has a, a small business association. They are filing a lawsuit. There's a lot of them out there. Um, for government overreach information they already have. And it's extremely burdensome from a tracking perspective for anybody who is in the smaller, medium-sized category of companies, just because uh, it's a lot of information that they have to pay attention to. So here are my reporting tips. Um, do not wait until December to report because everybody will doing that. And anybody that you wanna ask from legal CPA, uh, business uh, advisor perspective is going to be pretty busy. Get a fence in number, especially if you are associated with more than one company. Do not assume that your CPA is going to do this. Yes, they file your taxes. Most CPAs that I know are not going to report this. The um, liability from an insurance perspective is too much for them because of all the information that could change. Um, do your own research, um, be informed on what's going on, keep up with the, the announcements from those um, lawsuits. And I would make sure to educate anybody in your company that is an owner or in your company or those that you work with that are beneficial owners, which is someone with an O behind their name or has that senior level um, company structure, finance, hire, fire decisions in, in the company um, because they're gonna be part of this process as well. So um, here's my contact information. If anybody has any questions, I do wanna say I'm not an attorney. Play one on TV because I stayed at the Holiday Inn Express last night. 
Um, but I'm happy to answer questions just to help you find um, the information that you're looking for to pass you on. If you are looking for someone to file this information for you, there are uh, a lot of law firms have set up folks that can do this um, because of a legal um, liability perspective. They're the ones that are probably best um, able to answer any questions that you have or help you get through the process. But I'm also happy to answer questions. And um, Greg, I appreciate the time today and I hope you guys found the information valuable. Thank you so much, Hillary. Uh, this is such important information. Um, this will be posted on all the social media. Please like and share this. This is valuable information for every business to have. So um, thank you so much, Hillary.